I read most of Murphy Napier's favorite fantasy series, and these were my thoughts. Now, if you haven't watched my reaction to Daniel Green's favorite series video he made like three years ago, then you should definitely check that out, because there are particular three people that really got me into fantasy and have had a huge impact on my reading taste, and those are Daniel Green, Murphy Napier, and Mike's book review. Now, around two to three years ago, all of these booktubers released a my top 10 favorite series of all time list, and those three videos have had a massive, massive impact on my reading taste for the past three or four years. So today I thought it'd be fun to go back to this video that Murphy Navy released three, four years ago, which has had a huge impact on my reading taste. And even the fact that you're watching this video right now, I probably wouldn't even have created my channel if it wasn't for Murphy Napier. So Murphy, if you're watching this video, thank you so much for the positive impact you had on my life. And I will leave this original video in the description down below. So please go and give it a watch and give it a thumbs up. But without further ado, let's get into it. So here we have the video, my top 10 fantasy series in 2020. And we're now in 2024. So it's been a while and she's made at least one or maybe two videos since then where she's kind of opted this list so it's definitely worth noting that her taste and books and so on has changed quite a lot since then but nonetheless this video here had a huge impact on me and therefore i would love to react to it this is my top 10 favorite fantasy series the list. So, my number one favorite fantasy series of all time is going to be a surprise to no one if this isn't your first video of mine, and it's going to be The Chronicles of Narnia. What? Just kidding, it's The Gentleman Bastards. Okay, so okay. Wait a minute, okay, I thought I'd totally forgotten this. Okay, she said Narnia. And I was like, is that what's that her all-time favorite? Now, I believe that her favorite book is Peter Pan, so I was like, okay, maybe Narnia is her favorite series, because they're both, like, middle-grade fantasy literature and so on. But okay, nonetheless, Lies of Locke Lamora. I've only read the first book, so I do apologize, Murphy, but Lies of Locke Lamora is one of my favorite books of all time. I really need to continue. I've just been a bit slow because the series remains unfinished and it's been like 10 years since we got the release of book three. So I'll definitely be reading book two or maybe even three this year. But yeah, I definitely agree with this one. Lies of Locke Lamora is incredible and I've heard the other two books are also brilliant as well. So yeah, Murphy, you are without a doubt the number one reason why I actually picked up this book. And I just want to thank you because yeah, this is a great recommendation. If you're into a motley crew coming together, trying to pull off an impossible heist, like witty and interesting politics and really great characters and beautiful writing style, then Scott Lynch is your man. Let's move on to the next one. The next book or series that I'm going to be talking about is The Lord of the Rings, which was originally- Okay, Lord of the Rings, obviously it has to be on this. You know what is a bit of a shame? If we fantasy booktubers do not put Lord of the Rings on a my top 10 favorite fantasy series list, then we get so much hate for it. Now, I do think The Lord of the Rings is one of the greatest series of all time. I read it, I've loved it, and I actually picked it up even before I started watching Booktube, so she hasn't had an influence on me here. But yeah, gatekeeping really needs to stop when it comes to Lord of the Rings. You can still be a fantasy fan and not have read Lord of the Rings, but as I usually say, if you haven't read Lord of the Rings yet, you should definitely pick it up, because yeah, it's a great, great fantasy, and it's basically shaped every single book that has been released in the past 70 or 80 years in the fantasy sphere. And I know I already said it, that Murphy Napier, Daniel Green, and Mike's book review had a huge influence on helping me fall in love with reading and fantasy especially, but another thing that really can help you fall in love with reading and especially fantasy is to read these books, these amazing series, with people that enjoy fantasy. Now I think a lot of you had no idea that I actually have a Viking book club where once a month I read a book with you guys. And what is so unique about the Viking book club is that you can actually put the book forward that I'm going to be reading. So basically how it works is that if you're on tier two, then you can join the Viking book club in the discussions. If you join tier three, then you can put a book forward and then that book might be randomly chosen. And if you go to the highest tier, you can put two books forward or the same book twice. And you'll also get an art bundle like every three months, which is great. I've now had the Viking book club for five or six months and I have absolutely loved it. What I love so much about the Viking book club is that every single month, you guys force me to read a book that usually is a book I probably wouldn't have read otherwise. Last month, we read Fairy Tale by Stephen King, where we had a theme that the book had to be a standalone only. This month we read a self-published book called The Return of the Nights. And next month we are reading Hyperion by Dan Simmons for our sci-fi only book theme. And another thing that a lot of you don't know is that I basically have spent around 100% of all my Patreon incomes on video editing. Yes, since I launched my Patreon, I've literally had more than 25, maybe even now 30 videos professionally edited. So I've literally spent thousands of dollars on video editing and that money has come from my Patreon. So if you want to join the Viking book club and also massively support this channel, then I'll leave a link down in the description down below. Well, let's move on to the next one. Coming in at number three in my series is going to be the Stormlight Archive 
by Brandon Sanderson where Okay, Daniel Green, Marvin Napier, Mike's Book Review, and Captured in Words and so many other booktubers were the ones that introduced me to Brandon Sanderson and Solomon Archive. And yes, Solomon Archive is also one of my all-time favorite series. I haven't read Rhythm of War yet, but I've very, very recently finished Oathbringer. You can actually watch my full review here if you want to hear my full thoughts, both spoiler-free and spoiler-filled. But yeah, Solomon Archive is truly one of the modern great epics. It basically takes what was good about Mistborn and just brings it to a whole another scale. I mean, how do you even explain what Stormlight Archive is? Like, we have so many POVs, we have so many plot lines, we have so intricate and complicated world building. It is arguably one of the easier, like, big fantasy series to get into because of Brandon Sanderson's writing style. It's quite accessible to get into. The characters are just so good, like, you'll fall in love with all the characters. And what we come to love with Brandon Sanderson is his Sanderlanges, the conclusions. When you come to the end of A Way of Kings, A Word of Radiance, and also Oathbringer, like, those conclusions are so brilliant, so satisfying that they like burn into your mind forever like you can never just get over like how incredibly exciting it is to read the conclusion of a Solomon Archive novel. But yeah if you haven't read anything about Ren Sanderson I usually recommend starting with Mistborn but you can definitely start with The Way of Kings. So yeah great recommendation Murphy thank you so much for recommending the series. The series on my list is going to be the first Law Trilogy I used to have. Okay the first Law Trilogy now I don't think The Age of Madness had come out when she made this video so it kind of makes sense. I think the first Law Trilogy is brilliant but I always say Age of Madness, in my opinion, took everything that was good with the first trilogy and just improved upon it in every aspect. Like the plot twists are more satisfying. In my opinion, and I know this is crazy to say, but I think the characters are even better in Age of Madness. And what I find just so impressive is that the characters in Age of Madness, a lot of them are children of our cast from the first trilogy. And usually that is a trope that you just makes it feel very cheap usually, but Joe Abercrombie pulls it off perfectly. But yeah, if you're into incredibly cold complex characters, grimdark fantasy, and also fantasy novels that aren't too action-packed but where a lot of the tension and intrigue is in how the characters interact with each other, how they talk to each other, then The First Law is definitely for you. I totally agree with you here, Murphy. The First Law is an incredible series and it really looks like me and you have quite similar reading tastes, at least in Murphy from four years ago. Let's move on. Next on my list, whatever number we're on, what number are we on? Five. Number five on the list is going to be Mistborn. Yeah, Mistborn, one of the best trilogies I've ever read. I recommended it again and again and again. It is the perfect starting point if you want to get into fantasy. No, do not start with The Lord of the Rings. Like people that recommend Lord of the Rings as a good starting point are delusional in my opinion. Read some other fantasy first and then read Lord of the Rings. But yeah, incredible magic system, fantastic characters, and just more accessible than the Solomon Archive, even though I think Solomon is one of the more accessible, massive fantasy series. But yeah, I feel like everyone on BookTube has heard about Mistborn 5 billion times. So let's just continue. But yeah, as you can see, I definitely love Mistborn. Next series on this list coming in at number seven, I think is going to be The Rage of Dragons. Very interesting. I wonder if she would actually have put Rage of Dragons on her list now. The Rage of Dragons is one of the series I haven't picked up yet and that's only because my TBR is endless and since the first book came out like six years ago I think there's only been two books released so I kind of want to binge read the series when the third book or the fourth book comes out I think it's gonna be a quartet but yeah I do own both of these books somewhere on my shelves and I definitely want to read them and Murphy Navy was the first person that actually brought this series to my attention so hopefully I'll love it as much as she did back in 2020. Next series on this list I don't have because I got it all from the library but I do want to I do want to buy down the road and it's gonna be the Death Note series. Okay, manga. I don't really read manga yet, so obviously I haven't read this one. Next series on my list, I I struggled to figure out where to put it on the list. And that's the King Killer Chronicles. Okay, King Killer Chronicles. I actually noticed now that I've basically read all the series in the first half of this video, like the first six series, but the other ones I haven't really read. Patrick Ruffles, again, is an author that I will read one day, but since he doesn't seem to be interested in writing the third book, I'm not really sure if I'm interested in reading the series. No, actually, I will read it one day, no matter what happens. But yeah, hopefully the third book comes out soon. Coming in at number nine, I'm going to put Harry Potter and... Harry Potter is, I think, a great series to put on your top 10. Now, I today probably wouldn't put it in my top 10 anymore. But if you ask me when this this video came out, I would have totally agreed with Murphy Napier. Like, Harry Potter is, I believe, the first fantasy series I ever read. And I still think, even to this date, it does hold up. Yes, even if you read loads and loads of adult fantasy, like... 
J.K. Rowling just really knows how to tell a compelling story. But yeah, it is written for younger audiences. So if you are a, are a diehard Grimdark fan or something, then maybe this series is not for you. Harry Potter, everyone knows about it. Let's move on to spot number 10. There's a lot of people that are very opinionated about this series in both directions, and that is the Wheel of Time series. Okay, so she actually has the Wheel of Time already in 2020. Yeah, I think I actually read this series along with Murphy. She probably didn't know that. But yeah, I think she was a couple of books ahead of me. But yeah, I read the books with Mike's book review and Murphy Napier. So whenever I had finished one of the books, I went and looked at both of their reviews and it definitely helped me enjoy the Wheel of Time so much more. So yeah, Murphy, thank you so much for those book reviews. I still remember that she never made a book review for book 10, Crossroads of Twilight highlight because that book is just so boring so I don't blame her it's one of the worst fantasy books ever but yeah I would put The Wheel of Time higher on my list it might just be some nostalgia because it's one of the first adult fantasy series I ever read but I feel like I said it so often on this channel whenever people criticize The Wheel of Time I totally get it it has infuriating characters it has slow pacing it has a slog and the slog is real it has very repetitive writing style but oh it has incredible world building it has one of the most interesting plots i've ever come across some of the best world building ever like the magic system all the cultures we're introduced to are incredible and i just think that when you get to the end of the wheel of time and you have spent like 10 11 or 12 000 pages with these characters you just you cannot help but have fallen in love with them and you see where they started in eye of the world and then you come to a memory of light at the end and you just see how incredible these fantasy arcs are. Yes, The Wheel of Time is not perfect, but it's a flawed masterpiece, and Murphy, Daniel, and Mike's book review all inspired me to pick up the series, and I'm so glad I did. It is just, yeah, it holds a special place in my heart, so thank you so much, Murphy. So what I find really interesting about this video is that all the series I have actually read on this list, which I think were seven out of the 10, I've actually enjoyed all seven. I've enjoyed relatively much or a lot and they've become some of my favorite series. So compared to Daniel Green's video from three, four years ago, I definitely think that Murphy Napier's taste aligns much more with mine. So sorry, Daniel Green from 2020. Takes a win here if I have to compare the two of you. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Murphy Napier's favorite series from 2020. Let me know if you want to see my reaction to Mike's book review's favorite series from around three or four years ago. I think that would also be a fun video to make. Now, if you want to know what my favorite series are of all time then I would highly recommend checking out this video. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. Now if you want to support what I do here then I do have a Patreon. Now a reason why I created a Patreon was to find a new way to reinvest to the channel because basically since I created my Patreon I spent around 100% of my earnings to hire an editor to do a couple of videos for me a month. Now since creating my Patreon an editor has done more than 20 videos for me on my channel so it makes a huge difference. Now if you join my Patreon you will also get some benefits for example you'll get a name in my videos like these guys you'll also be able to join the exclusive viking book club where every month we read one book together and you might be the one to put the book forward this month we're reading this book and next month we're reading this book you also get to vote on my next read get access to exclusive videos like a wrap up or even book reviews and so much more but this is totally voluntary but all support is much appreciated